January 8, 1.21 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. So we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case won now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to. But Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if he, what he testified is the truth. You mean you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? No. Yeah, I don't think he was lying. I don't know. But if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that we don't have the case-making evidence we're going to need. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe! What are you so jumpy about, Detective? Your hair's standing on end! Hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black! Little Miss and Top Nuts! Well, that was rude. That is pretty rude, actually. It's not a Top Nuts! Never mind about the hair. Just calm down, alright? Uh, I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do! Uh, I kind of get wound up. Uh, <sighs> no kidding. You gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Oh, he's that kind of person. I can kind of get behind that sometimes. Yeah. well, um... Yeah, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. I could get some prints analyzed for you if you got an hour. An hour? The trial will have reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. You said you could get some fingerprints analysis done in an hour. You bet! In that case, would you mind checking the prints on this for me? The bottle? Like the uh, green one? Take that! <laughs> Why'd I have to do it that way? <laughs> uh, if you're going back to the station anyways, could you find out whose prints are on this? Oh, hey, that's the small bottle I gave back to you this morning, right? Yeah. I think it's time we solved the last mystery of who the prints on it belong to. Sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been gnawing at me, too. I mean, if we just gave it to Gumshoe, or if he just kept it and gave it to us during the trial, it'd have been solved by now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, I'll get this off, off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. Uh-huh. Got it. This is pretty much the final showdown, I guess. It's the final showdown. It's time to separate the ponies from the real guys. Uh, I'm going to hate the next hour of my life. <laughs> January 8, 8.56 p.m. District Court, courtroom number four. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Godot, did you find this for you, Tigre? I even tamed him for you. I was a, it was a free cup job, no problem. T tamed him? The guy's name may be Furio Tigre, but come on! He's pretty lively. Be careful, he still bites. Very well, please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. <sighs> oh boy. I'm gonna hate this. Um, witness, please state your name and occupy three. <laughs> Don't hide under the table, Maya. Unless there's room for me down there, too. I, uh, um, uh, would you mind? What'd you say to me? Uh, nothing. I didn't say nothing. So honest. Who could have guessed that fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? <laughs> Wait, he's from Brooklyn? <laughs> it's, a, I know? it's a Brooklyn accent, okay. Okay, I can't, um, I didn't plan for this, so I'm not gonna change it. <laughs> I got business to take care of, you hear me? Now, so who the hell called me into this hole? Ah, was it you, Spiky? <laughs> no, of course not. It was the judge? The judge will you hide? Y your honor? <laughs> Oh, oh dear, I, um, I seem to have dropped my pen. Uh, we are no offenses. Don't mind me, just carry on with the proceedings as normal. That's it. We're doomed. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, who the hell was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. I'm not shouting. This is my indoor voice. Uh -huh. What'd you say? There's no point struggle. You're caught in the snare. The relentless snare of the law. Oh, boy. Oh. And I am the one that hold you in. <laughs> Too cool. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix, if you had even 1% of his coolness, you'd be a way better character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but alas. Don't let him get the better of you, Nick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy! You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Byrne? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas! Oh, of course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Godot so knows. My theory is right. He just 
he's about to take the case and then he just sees Tigre's like, that ain't Phoenix. Eh, whatever. Yeah, I am pretty confident. No. I'm pretty confident Gudo could guess that immediately. Gudo is far I'm too, sure he could. Gudo is far too cool and intelligent. <laughs> Please uh, tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. <laughs> Phoenix right. You's the one who set this up, didn't you? You's gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? Ugh. Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. I got a grip, Mitch. Stop hiding. Tiger's alibi. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all my time in my office. I got whales lined up to borrow cash from Tender Lender every single day. <laughs> you want to check my alibi? Just ask Violetta. Ah, uh, at last I found my pen. Uh-huh. Hey, well done, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, please. Ah! <laughs> oh, what is it? Uh, please, witness, if you could be afraid from shouting out like that. I know the kind of games that guy in the blue plays. That lowlife ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. That is not what, well, be yes. not what being a lawyer is. L lowlife? Me? Well, yes, but all low life's are, all lawyers are also low lives. <laughs> Unless you're a lawyer that watches these videos, then no. You're totally a high life. Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something, something about that doesn't relate to this case, I'm going to bill you $50,000 and you's going to borrow the cash from me. What? That's, that's not how that works. Uh, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. <laughs> and don't think it ain't going to hurt when you tangle with the tiger. Uh, that is not how loans work. Yeah, it is not. <laughs> I love a good spectator sport. Just, just a minute, that's really not. This witness is... How can I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well, I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of witness testimony. Oh! Oh, great. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wrights. Uh, yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick! Come out from under there already, would you, Maya? Okay, so we have- Alright, so we can't just press willy-nilly. Yeah, we have to be very cautious when we press. You know, I am filled with determination. Here's my determination save. <laughs> Alright, so we don't have to press with this. Okay. That whale's lined up, that doesn't matter. You just want to check my alibi, that doesn't matter. So it has to be this one. Probably that. Because we have evidence he was meant to meet with the tiger. Yes. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Is he talking about Vi uh, Viola Cataverni? She writes everything in my scheduler. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says. That's where I was. That seems like a rather, uh, sketchy schedule. <sighs> there he goes again. Hmm. What the tiger did all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. So, now what? Press harder. Yep. Mr. Tigre, what'd you want? Uh, uh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. <sighs> this is a dead end, right? And you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day too? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats wandering, wanted to do business with me. I ain't never seen that young kid before. Oh, really? Uh, I don't believe the witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. Tigre, the court asks you to add the last statement to your testimony. Huh! Don't let an animal beat you, be a man, your honor, and ask him yourself. Alright, so the day you was talking about, I was in the office too, I never saw that kid before, so... Here we present the calendar. I object! Mr. Tigre, you claim you didn't know Mr. Glenn Elg, but it appears that Mr. Elg knew you. What?! Mr. Elg left this little note on his calendar. Okay, switching between Phoenix and the Tiger sucks. Oh, I can imagine. Just FYI. I can imagine. Meet with the Tiger. And the date? December 3rd. December 3rd? That's... that's the day of the murder! So, Mr. Tigre, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glenn Elg, because on the very day of the incident, you met with him. 
<laughs> not bad. You was actually not bad. Uh, sorry? I was just messing with you to see how good you were. Really? Uh-huh. Did you hear that, Nick? He said that you're not bad. Uh-huh. That's one compliment I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his very, very sharp teeth. Uh, witness, please remember that you are under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. You just call me a liar! Is that what you doing? Uh, Roro! Okay, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> so you're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth? <laughs> I said I'm dead serious. You just better believe that's the truth. <laughs> and I'd say that gives me time to join another cup of pure black magic. That is all you testify for the court again, T. Gray. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, would you mind indulging the court, witness? He never actually met the victim? That's got to be the lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. The victim, Glenn Elg. I ain't no liar. I never met Glenn Elg. <laughs> there was some lame guy with that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. I set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tender Lender. I waited around for him, but he ain't ever showed. I ain't never even been to that Trebian joint. You was here. Oh, I know exactly where the contradiction is there, though. I see. Where is it? It all seems perfectly logical. The uh, Trebian matchbox we found in his office. Oh, yeah. You had arranged to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well, you may begin your cross examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Didn't I tell you I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. That feels going straight to you, right? No, I really don't want to press unless we have to. Yeah. Ain't no liar. I have a that never even been there. That's where we can Yep. Mr. Tigre, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What you was talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. What? If you've really never been to Trebian before, what was the book of the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? You've been snooping around to my stuff now, too, wise guy. What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad controlling me. Order, order. Well, witness, I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm totally sorry. Forgive me. I ain't no pussycat. I don't go back on what I said, but okay, I was at the joint that day. W what? <laughs> but listen good, all right? I might have been there, but I still never met that kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. Great. <laughs> I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elg that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. <laughs> that was not his normal laugh. My poor throat. <laughs> I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be. So I split. I heard the cop sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. Hmm. I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it! If I wait around here any longer, I ain't gonna make the normal express. <laughs> no more stupid questions. <laughs> no problem. Any time Tride places you on something irrelevant, I'll see he pays a penalty. Uh, Mr. Couture, that's my job! Your job is to slam a little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Uh, yes, sir. The Special Express ain't cheap, right? <laughs> Just so you know, since you's paying. <sighs> oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? Apparently not. Nope. Okay, so where's the contradiction here? We have no proof of that. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. Is that how the layout is? I figured the place wasn't how ready it was going to be. Hey, wait a sec, look at the floor plan. Look at the floor plan. He could not have seen him from the door. Yeah, there's no way he could have. Yeah, he could not have seen him. Because, yeah, I've seen it enough that I was going to check this anyways. Because we, whenever we were in there, we were here, so we could see over here. Yeah. But if you're here, there's no way. So, I present to this, I guess? Hey, yeah, cool, I do. You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tigre? <laughs> no one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. 
And no one escapes the Phoenix's clutches, okay? I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, Trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning? These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigre. From there, your field of vision would have covered an area something like this. Indeed, the waitress would have had a clear view of the victim's seats. No, he wouldn't. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head! <laughs> no, that's not how that works. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, that is not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables is a tall partition. Why, that's true! Now, look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. Unless I look to the left, but whatever. Oh, he's about to break. I'm not looking forward to that. So, from the entrance of Chebien, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day, because you met with him. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. But the defense just proved that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glen Elg, but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer poses the victim he had just killed and acted out a charade. Wait a second, we think Fury and Tigre messed up not only as Glen Elg, but as Phoenix Rat. Apparently, he <laughs> certainly seems to have the, have the clothes for it. All right, Master of Disguise, Furio Tigre somehow. Yeah, I'm not sure how. That will do. This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? <gasps> Why did I think of this? You say the killer murdered Glen Elk? Yes. And then impersonated his victim in a performance for Victor Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. Your Honor, it is Maya Fey. No, it was Fury Tigre, obviously, or Zinfiop. It was Bruto Cataverni, oh. Your Honor. <laughs> For some reason, this old dude's involved. I'm touching that. <laughs> <laughs> the judge would be like, who? Oh, I never heard of him. Don't worry about that. Case closed. Maya Bird, uh, Maggie Bird guilty. I've get the hell out of my courtroom. <laughs> it was Tigre. Obviously. The killer is Furio Tigre. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness? <laughs> now that's cute. <laughs> you think you can pin this on the tiger? <laughs> Maybe you don't understand. The tiger is king of the jungle. So I dare you to say it again. Come on. You got the guts. Uh, you can't threaten me, Mr. Tigre. It's a defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Mr. Wright! <laughs> Sounds to me like it must be you, old man. You've got guts. I'll give you that. Mr. Wright, do not leave me to handle this alone. This course, <laughs> this case is so stupid. <laughs> this courtroom is dumber than that. Uh, where's the bailiff? <laughs> Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Kudo! Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't just see the victim. Oh, no, no, no. The serving girl brought him a cappuccino, but she put something in it. I'm so glad you took his voice over because there's no way I could do him and the tiger. Yeah. There's no question about it. She said you conspicuously put some white powder in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains. So the accused put the poison into the coffin. Yes, it was the waitress who poisoned the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> Found your pen at last, right? Uh, it was in my pocket. Um, anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glen Elg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright? I think that conclusion is obvious. If this Glenn Elg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? Yes, nothing is as it seems, your honor. This is a really weird phony court I'm in today. The defendant, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an, an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? Violetta? 
Oh, Viola. Yeah, Viola, say yeah. Well, who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cataverni. She's an employee of Tender Lender. You was making a big mistake. Do you know who Violetta's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight, if you know what I mean. I'm not trying to get her arrested, Stop. I assure you. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bird. <sighs> she has stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee off to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy, and she had kind of a cackling laugh. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen. The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when the eardrum was ruptured. And the radio show he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There is only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real, and once for show. And Mr. Furio Tigre, the only person who could, who could have committed the crime, is you. Witness, have you got, what have you got to say? <laughs> That's cute. Sorry? You's all right. I can do with a guy like you around. Wh what do you mean? <laughs> okay, I'm in on this game. <laughs> I'm going to have to charter a jet to get me to my meeting now, but I'm going to give you one more thing to think about before I go. <sighs> Something to think about? You's got it all wrapped up nice, huh? Right. <laughs> but you missed out on one real important thing. <sighs> but that can't be. I was in the joint that day, and I met that kid, too. Ignore the fact I lied 50 times already today. Uh, we could play that all. But I couldn't have poisoned him, you's here. What? Do you expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? Are you questioning me, Judge? Uh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. <laughs> what a troublemaker. Tr troublemaker? Which coffee are you drinking? Looks like we're going to need another one for the road. Hmm. One more steaming cut of hot testimony. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you one more chance to testify. <laughs> We've already proven he's a liar, Your Honor. Yep. What happened that day at 5 p.m. between yourself and the victim? What happened? With the highest of the victim. <laughs> yeah, I loaned out cash about $100,000. <laughs> that day, we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. <laughs> he got lucky, you know, real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Oh, sh where's the contradiction here? Now I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elk was $50,000. Yeah, well, he's got the vidge to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. Man, that's brutal. That's faster than fast. 100,000 is twice his principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd. Did they have the incident in question? T yeah, he was one lucky kid. <laughs> he got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. Oh, oh my God. God. Not the motive again. Oh, this is the motive. It always comes back. <sighs> I hate the motive argument so much. His motive? Hmm. He has to have one, but what is it? We know. Don't we? Yeah, he needs the money himself. Well, not only that, but Glenn L gave him was going to give him something more valuable. That's true. Remember what the MC Bomber. robot lady said? MC Bomber. Yeah. So if we're trying to find a motive, it's not this. That day we was due to have a little chat. That doesn't matter. He tells me he has no way to pay up. Then he got lucky. No way to pay up. That's where the no way to pay up. That is where it's, it's done. But... If we're trying to prove he did it, he's blaming the waitress. If the waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. That's true. If we're trying to prove a motive with MC Bomber, he never mentioned that. That is true. So I'm filled with determination. Really? All right, let's press this, I guess. The waitress, you mean. The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? If she hadn't gotten in the way, things would have been bada bing, bada boom, over and done with. Maybe I should push a little on yes. this. We know, ask about what she did is stupid. Ah, she poisoned the guy, you bitch. How things would have been. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? I use all there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back. That's all. I'm a businessman doing business. 
It was all coming together before that waitress got in the way. Mm, as far as I could tell from the waitress's testimony, other than recouping his loan, Mr. T had no motives for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. The tiger's motive, huh? I was I was after the hundred thousand. I didn't have no re other reason to kill that guy. But we were told this CD is worth millions. Yes. Oh, cool. So you just intend to get back the hundred thousand dollars Mr. Elk owed you, correct? I loaned the guy the cash, so that's my right. No, it's not. Unfortunately for Mr. Elk, I don't believe that hundred thousand dollars is what you were really after. What are you getting at, Trite? What else would a money lender be after other than money? More money? More money! Yeah, more money? Oh, the money lender was after money. <laughs> but money in a totally different league. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch for. Oh, this starts. A computer virus, Your Honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? It kills everybody it touches, Your Honor. What? A computer virus is a program that wrecks havoc on the insides of a computer. Oh, now I'm feeling a lot better. A computer? What does one of those do? Your Honor, I'm going to kill you myself. <laughs> Wait, who's the assassin that I need to make a call to? I forgot um, what his name was. Oh, I don't remember. Shelly the Killer. Yes, Shelly I need to call yeah. Shelly the Killer to go after the judge now. He's an idiot. <laughs> <sighs> I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. Nice yeah. brain is. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. Several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glenn Elg had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glenn Elg was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was collateral, was the collateral Mr. Elg put up in order to borrow the money. You're trying to suggest that with this motive was to get hold of that program. Yes, actually. <laughs> exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he's by no means an idiot, right? A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars and I'll be sold to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time. But what if he needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. I do, but does Methus? Would, would you care to share it with us? I think it's the um the bill thing on the uh, Akaterinis. Why did Mr. Tri Tigre need money for to, to the tune of one million dollars? Yeah, I own those medical papers. That. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital, where she underwent surgery. <laughs> How much of this uh, do you know? Everything. These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. And yet, when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars? An imposter's sum. Someone should use those HMOs. Let's just sue those HMOs. I... I agree. <laughs> no one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tigre had no choice but to pay, because his very life depended on it. <laughs> My poor throat. Order, order, order! You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright? Indeed it did, simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cataverni. Who I'd like to point out has nothing terrible to do with this case. Yeah, yeah, she simply cosplayed this. as a waitress for a short time. Leave her alone and please don't have the family come murder me. I will eat a cookie if she makes them. <laughs> Did you say Cadaverini? I said that earlier, dude. Bruno Cadaverni, my boss in charge of all the underworld activities in the city and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cataverni. Dude, you don't publicly say he's a doting grandfather. Yeah. He has a he has an image. Phoenix, I'm sorry, but you're dead. <laughs> nope, after this case is over, there's no more anime, call it. 
Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. Yeah. You were desperate to acquire that $1 million Bruto Cataverni demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glenn Elg's life to pay your debt. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tigray's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glenn Elg had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tigray knew it. But then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigray would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm trying to think logically here. December 3rd is his payment date. Yes. He won the lottery on the 3rd. You're not getting that money for weeks, probably. So he's still not paying it on time. Yeah. And if Glenn Elg is willing to make a virus like this, I feel like he would just pay off his debt and keep the 500 grand for himself. There's no reason that he already made something unless he's himself extremely greedy and has black market connections. Because <laughs> I don't think it's morals at all in this situation for Glenn. Oh, yeah. So in all honesty, he didn't need to die. So for some reason, Glenn L wanted to keep the CD over the money, which makes no a, sense. Yeah, I have a feeling Glenn just had no idea about the underworld. He probably didn't. And seeing as he was willing to make a virus, oh, I yeah. highly doubt he had much in the way of morals. Oh, yeah. Exactly. At the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. Tigre with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. Yes, it does. Ugh, hate this. At least, no legitimate way. Those hands aren't red enough. So he resorted to Ill illegitimate means with the potassium cyanide. He just carries on him for some reason. Yeah, uh, apparently he just has potassium cyanide on him. That's crazy. He murdered Glenn Elg and then made his next move to frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tigre posed as Glenn Elg. While Viola Cataverni played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trey, that's crazy. No one could pull off a son like that. Ah, but you see, he's a master of disguise. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept in the dark about it. He wasn't. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the waitress or the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigre's plan. Order, order. Silence, I will clear the call. <laughs> You was put on a good show, Spikey. If you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you got to be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid, created a witness, and framed someone. If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a tail as bright as my shirt. <laughs> I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. Y you do? Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one? Miss Wright? My poor throat. Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Wright? What was this trick you say Mr. Tigre performed to frame the accused? We know he impersonated us. Don't we have something? Yes, we have the badge. Oh, this yeah. Is so stupid. Yeah. He, he, oh, my God. You're right. He played you. He yeah. played Phoenix Wright. What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be filled by such a childish imitation. Your Honor, um, consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. Tigre, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. What? That's... that's... The truth. But the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. That's what I've been saying. Although... Now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here, this very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright will put up the most disreputable shower defense I had ever seen! <laughs> Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused TN a month ago was this man. Can you prove it was me? Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? <laughs> hey, uh, forget about it, yeah? I wouldn't do something like that. Uh, not me. 
Uh, you, uh, you made a mistake, uh, right? It was someone else, uh, huh? What? <laughs> you scared. Have you no pride, sir? <laughs> How much coffee are you drinking? This isn't a matter of pride. Yes, it is. In a case you didn't know, right here in court would deal with people's lives. Yes, you're right. And I wasn't here last month. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor? Speak up for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question by the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Let's have your brother in here. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No! Where's Gumshoe? If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigre are dubious for sure, but not, not conclusive. But, but we've come so far! You say he impersonated Glen Elk. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to, the mur to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Ah! Ah! Great. <laughs> Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get mauled. You's got that! Ugh, all we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. Uh, but I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. <laughs> Amicado. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. Where's Gumshoe? Now we need Gumshoe to show up. <sighs> if I just had one more piece of evidence. Preferably buy some dude in a weird jacket. One right more piece that. of evidence and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. Right about, about now, now would be nice. This word, this is pleasant combination is over. You are free to go, Mr. T. Gray. Your Honor, sir. Wait! Oh my god. <laughs> Yay! Detective. Detective. Detective oh, Gumshoe. Sorry it took so long, pal. I, I, I stick everything on this. My badge, the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too. What is it, Detective? Is it obvious, pal? It's the final designs a piece of evidence. What? What? Letter 8, 2 or 48 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Yeah? Sorry it took so long, pal. But I finally got the results of the lab. The results? About the prince, pal. On his medicine bottle. Oh, so do you know who the prince belongs to now? Do you think I'm some kind of black detective? Of course I know. So, tell us. They're the t tigers, right? I knew it. <laughs> you bet. Clear as crystal all over the bottle. If you're a tigress poor prince, all right. That's great. We've got him now, Nick. What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gums you got here. He's laid everything on the line for this, Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glad Elk's coffee. He already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle, that really doesn't make any difference now. I knew it. Right. No matter how hard I try, I never have any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's all right. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. I don't know who this is. I'm assuming Maggie, but I don't know. Yeah, I was right. Oh, Detective Gumshoe? Maggie, you've been working on something for me? Are we having some hard to hell conversation here? I, I guess. Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. I can also break dance. We are supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get it out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. Dinner 8, 3.04 p.m. District Court, courtroom number 4. Tigre must be angry! Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I granted your recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. Stop with the coffee! Don't keep us all in suspense, right? Show us. Sorry, the already cops. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. <laughs> How 
much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been to no court before. But you lawyers sure know how to blow things out of proportion. Oh, not given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed into a corner here. But maybe if I if he thinks he got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Hmm, that is a strategy. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. You really think it is the green bottle then? I think it is. I think I know what they might be going for. We're trying to make him think we have the right thing. Ah, so, I, I get you. Hold on. I don't know if this is going to work. I should have made a save. I wasn't filled with enough determination, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victims? Your Honor, naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigre. What? Gito's was like, eh, I'm just gonna sit back and watch. But Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Ah, everyone in here knows what this bottle contains. Except one man, one person's courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. <laughs> My prints are on that pansy looking bottle. Is that what you saying? Well, what the hell's in it anyway? A phony trail, a phony lawyer, and phony cliffs. <laughs> Everything about this case has been phony. Let's keep it up. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. <laughs> Mr. Tigre, this is a decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... <laughs> Potassium <laughs> cyanide! <laughs> <laughs> this bottle contains... Potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. L, Your Honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? <laughs> You'd make a good clown, you know that. What? <laughs> Yous ain't never gonna get that this to stick. Yous just making me laugh now. <laughs> you think a cheap bluff like that is gonna beat Fool the Tiger? A bluff? <laughs> I can see straight through you, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> that ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no. This is the bottle we found traces of poison in. <laughs> Don't mess with the tiger or you're gonna get ripped to shreds. But he already just admitted it. The yeah. cyanide bottle was brown and it was made of glass. That cheap piece of trash. Don't look nothing like it. When is he gonna figure out that he, that he just basically admitted it? Yeah, oh, Godot, shit. Godot, Godot already realized. <laughs> and so did the judge. Oh. Uh, how do you know what that looks like, uh, dude? Got him. At last. Oh, what? Why has everyone gone crying? I said the bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle the cyanide was in. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Uh, don't let that crazy looking suit fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Uh, tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out? Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Uh, uh. But just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Uh, um... You don't know who you's messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. You think I'm going to let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure, the last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. Master of Disguise, L. Tigre. <laughs> Oh, my throat! Ah, I can't do it. My oh throat. my god! Oh my god! Okay. What the hell? Wow! Okay, going full saying now, Andre. Did he just break down inside? Did he just <laughs> cause a blackout? <laughs> What's going on? Oh my god! It looks like it looks like a blackout. Well, that's terrifying. 
Well done, trite. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. I thought that was 17 a trial, not a day. Dude, will you Ooh, stop? Wow. Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe. If this one's hollers, he won't be let go. Now then, how are things going with Mr. Tiger Tigre, Mr. Goodell? He's being arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glen Elk, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Mr. Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. In the absence of a genuine evidence, but the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip up off the tongue. Your tigre is a truly frightening criminal. <laughs> the truly frightening one is that defense attorney over there. Godot. Well, I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds defendant Maggie Bird not guilty. Yay! Why are you still in a waitress uniform? And there was much rejoicing. That is all. This court is adjourned. January 8th, 4 10 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. Mr. Wright, I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in that trouble a month ago, but now I feel like I can forgive him. You know, one small detail I think I noticed with Maggie is her nails are painted. They're pink. Oh, yeah, so they are. Yeah. Maya's is not. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick, the doorway in the doorway. See, there's no fingernail pa painting on not for Maya. Yeah. <sighs> Detective Gumshoe. Oh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. <laughs> oh, wait. No running. Detective Gumshoe. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony, then? Huh? Oh, uh, well, uh, I was... Just blame Godot. Well, I guess I'll be heading off, then. See you around. Wait up, Detective! He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his spot for you. It's thanks to him that we've got the medication bottle. It wasn't even any of any use. But it's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. It's like the gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Are you putting a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie. You know, Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you through all of this. I want to believe that, sir. But on the first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. He, he thought I might have done it! <sighs> Got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know, I'll give her a pr little present to celebrate her freedom. A lunchbox! Made with love from Gumshoe. With lots of weenies. Take that! Take that! Seriously, take this, I'm done carrying it around. <laughs> Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. That, that's... A present from Detective Gumshoe. Made with tons of love and weenies. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. Detective Gumshoe. I I actually really like weenies. You know? Maya? Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? I didn't even have lunch. Um, is it okay if I eat this now? Yes, we ate in front of you before you can eat in front of us. Shouldn't you uh, have a microwave first, but I guess not. It's magic. So, how is it, Maggie? Oh my god, Maya looks so happy. <laughs> oh yeah, she does. It's... it's really good. Now can you please change out of that uniform? Yeah, that, that uniform has been there for a little bit too long. So the case of a phony versus genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Why do you take a picture of an empty lunchbox? <laughs> the end. Edgeworth! Yes! <laughs>